There is evidence of cavemen shaving their faces using flint and other kinds of sharpened materials long before we invented metal razors. And today, the act of shaving one's face is more common than ever, all thanks to the invention of the humble safety razor. So today, let's take a look at how the revolutionary safety razor gets made. Selecting the raw materials. Now, unlike the old school cutthroat razors, which were meant to be reused for years on end while being sharpened again and again, modern razor blades are meant to be sharpened once and then keep their edge until they're disposed of. For this purpose, instead of being made from traditional stainless steel, which is softer and more polishable, they are made from a kind of steel called carbide steel. This is much stiffer and harder to polish by hand, but once sharpened, can retain its edge without corroding for months. This steel, once selected, is brought into the factory in the form of long rolled up steel ribbons that are each just four one thousandths of an inch thick. These steel spools are then unwound for the first step in production. Punching. Since the strip is just one long piece of steel, to turn it into blades, it has to be cut into the right shapes. For this, the unbroken strip is fed into a punching machine that stamps the openings and holes out from the steel strip. It also presses the eventual shape of each blade into the strip, although it doesn't separate the individual blades just yet. At this stage, the unbroken and unsharpened blade shapes are called blanks, and they're quickly moving on to the next step in the process. The treatment process. Now, the blanks up till now are still made from untreated steel, which owing to its incredible thinness, is very moldable and not nearly as strong as it needs to be. So in order to counter this softness and turn them into the eventual strong product, the blanks have to undergo a lengthy and thorough four-step treatment and tempering process. This process starts by heating up the steel blades in a blast furnace at a blistering 2000 degrees Fahrenheit for just 30 seconds before immediately submerging the burning hot strip into cold water in a process called quenching. Once they've reached room temperature due to the quench, they are then brought into a cooling chamber where they are cooled down for 20 seconds at negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. After this final stint in the cooler, the strips are finally brought back to room temperature by gentle heating, completing the treatment. This process of applying high heat followed by slow cooling is known as tempering, and it helps reduce the inner stresses in steel by rearranging its atoms which makes it much more stable and uniform, it reduces potential breaking points and simply makes it stronger. And once fully tempered, the blades are now strong enough to be able to cut through even the coarsest of facial hair without even the slightest budge. And speaking of cutting, this is where probably the most important bit in the making of a blade comes, the grinding. At this station, the tempered stuff blades are first passed through a printing machine that inscribes the company name and logo onto the blades before drying off the ink using gas burners. Then, once labeled, the blades make their way into a set of grinders. These consist of rotating belts or cylinders of varying grit, size, and angle, all of which slowly but surely taper the blades' longer edges into sharp, perfect cutting edges. These edges are made to be as perfect and clean as possible, and the slightest change in quality between or along the cutting edges can make the difference between a clean shave or a nasty cut. This is also why, after having been ground, the edges also spend a considerable amount of time between two polishing wheels that makes sure that even after the rough grind, the blade retains its smooth, shiny surface. All this obviously produces a lot of steel dust and burrs that can act as serious safety hazards, which is why upon leaving this station, the razor blades are rinsed clean under a water stream to remove any of the bigger chunks of metal still stuck to the steel. And once this is done, the blade can finally make their way to one of the most extensive parts of the blade making process, testing. Now, unlike knives and other cutting instruments, which would be perfectly usable at this point. The fact that razors are meant to be used on the human body means that they have to take a lot more precautions before use. This is why before the blades can be assembled, they must first pass through a series of final treatments to check and finalize the blade strength and texture. But before that can happen, the blades also need to first be separated from each other. For this, the still combined strip made of polished blades 
passes through another punching machine, which breaks off individual blades along previously punched lines, ensuring a clean break. These blades are then collected on top of a thin metal attachment that keeps all the blades arranged in the form of a long perfect stack consisting of one batch with about 800 blades each. This stack is then carried by a worker to the testing lab, where a technician selects a few blades at random to be tested. Some of them are observed under a microscope to check the grinding quality edge geometry. All the while, others are put into simple pressure tests to check the blade's strength. A few are even put to a cut test where a machine measures the force required to cut some wet paper using the blades. Once all the test samples pass the test, the entire batch is brought into an observation room where they are visually checked for abrasions and edge defects. And to make this process as perfect as possible, this observation is done under UV light, which highlights any cuts or breaks so they can be caught. And if the blades pass all these tests, they can finally head over to finishing. The completed and tested blades here are first cased in a vacuum chamber where a very thin layer of chromium-based coating is applied, which seals the surface of the metal against immediate corrosion while making the metal stronger at the same time. After this, the blades are put into a washing machine, which cleans and rinses the surface of the blades for a few minutes before they are once again dried and painted with a spray for a non-stick coating that will help the blades glide smoothly on the user's skin. And once done, the blades are finally dipped into some organic oil for half an hour to further slow down corrosion while also helping the blade be safe when it's used. This finally concludes the making of the safety blade, but that still leaves the head of the razor, which will hold one of the multiple sets of these blades. So let's take a look at how those are made. Plastic components. Now, almost all the non-metal and non-blade components of a safety razor are made separately from the blades, but that doesn't mean they are any less important. To make them, the company uses small plastic pellets that have already been dyed the desired color. These tiny granules are brought into a light furnace that quickly liquefies them before an injection pushes this plastic liquid into molds that have already been cut into the desired shapes. The mold then applies some pressure onto the quickly cooling plastic, turning it into the razor head. All other bits, like the handle, cover, and others, are made the same way as these. And once these are all complete, we can finally move on to the final step of the process, assembly and packing. Here, the plastic heads are first put onto vibrating conveyor belts that slowly orient the head's face down before feeding them into a massive assembly chamber. This chamber consists of multiple robot arms, all organized around a bunch of rotating conveyors. These arms first place the cartridge on one of the assembly stations on the conveyor before passing them down to a smaller arm. Now, another machine brings in blades that are distributed onto the awaiting razor heads. The machine then deposits the blades onto the heads, and then a third machine brings the covers. The covers are attached with sacrificial anodes that halt corrosion before being snapped onto the razors. The heads can now be sent down another conveyor belt before another batch takes their place. The completed heads along with the molded handles and additional accessories are finally collected at the packing station where they are packaged in plastic and cardboard packaging before being sent for use by millions of men and women worldwide. And well, on that note, we must end today's video. So click on any one of the two videos on your screen right now and we'll catch you guys in the next one.